Well, welcome students to this particular lecture on combination tillage implements for efficient land preparation. Here, before I take into the details of that, it is very imperative to let you know as to why we are talking of uh, economizing everything. In fact, in order to in decrease the cost of input, we have to and maximize the output, we have to think of the all the inputs and the manner in which they are uh, utilized and the way they, these are put to the um, uh, crop production system. For example, if you want to economize on each and every input, it starts from the seed, fertilizer, fuel, energy, machine energy and all that. So, when we want this, we have to think of how and what equipment to be used so that we utilized minimum and get maximum output from the implement. We use less fuel, we get maximum output from there. We utilized less machinery, less um, uh, actually the, uh, the manufactured, manufactured material, but still we get more output. This is what is the aim behind all these uh, precision agriculture that we are talking today. In this uh, line, it is very imperative to tell you that uh, implements which have been used so far and you have seen the operation of those implements. You have seen the operation of a mold bulb plow, whether it is a two bottle mold bulb plow or a three bottle mold bulb plow or you have seen the operation of a disc plow, your operation of a disc harrow, operation of optic disc harrow, operation of cultivator and so on and so forth. You have seen they have been all used with the single power source and there are widths varying from 1.8 meter to 2.1 meter and things like that. They require a certain level of power from the power source. But we have been talking always and as I told in one of my class that it is still a mystery as to uh, how we can uh, think of a managed or uh, most optimum size of a uh, equipment to match the size of the power source. This is still there because of the situations which happen in the soil. The, because soil is a viscoelastic material, it, with soil moisture it behaves something differently, with the soil strength it behaves something differently and therefore, one type of equipment may not be uh, useful and may not be effective in all sorts of conditions of the soil, uh, whether it is a black cotton soil or lateritic soil or a sandy soil and so on and so forth. Therefore, we need to think into how best we can have an implement. Now, if you think that the implement should be such that it does the operation, we have also seen that when we a moldboard plow is operated, at least two passes of um, uh, harrow has to be given to um, create the uh, soil tilt which is required for seed bed preparation and planking. So, the amount of energy is spent, the amount of fuel is spent for the tractor which will be much more higher. And in that case, then we would like to think even then we are not getting a matching implement for this operation. The time required is another uh, point of uh, consideration because lot of point is um, a point, uh, lot of time is spent in tillage operations. We see that the out of total production about 30 to 40 percent of energy is spent on tillage itself. So, we have to think of some innovative way of uh, using this machine energy, the fuel energy and saving the time. In this line of thinking, we have now over the years, in fact, if you see the condition of the European and other uh, implements in the West, they have been using large uh, combination tillage equipment, but in India it has uh, very recently started being used. What is a combination tillage implement? Let us have a look at this and then we will discuss more details of the. What is a combination tillage uh, implement? Well, combination tillage, the name itself talks that there is a combination of two items here. We had initially one type of uh, implement say a mold bulb plow or a harrow. Now, the moment we talk of putting these two together, we will talk of a combination. So, a combination tillage uh, equipment is one in which two or more different tillage implements are operated at the same time in order to manipulate the soil and reduce the number and time of uh, field operations. Very, very simple and very clear in the thought of what a combination tillage means. Now, this combination tillage uh, could be of different types. Why? 
For example, if we have one uh, mold bolt plow, if you put another uh, mold bolt plow behind that or another disc plow behind that, you can say that well, both are implements which are being operated. Now, you, you can say that I, if I have a mold bolt plow, if I want to put another uh, rotor or rotavator, this is another set of combination. You can have a combination where we can put a rotavator in the front and we can put a cultivator at the back. Now, if these combinations are taken, sometimes it is also said that one implement is in the front of the tractor and the other implement at the back of the tractor. We have done some work also, then maybe the, the um, uh, plow is uh, in the front and at the back, but then that requires uh, different arrangements for, for, the, um, for the balancing of the tractors total CG and the weight uh, transfer which takes place for the front and the rear, those many things are to be considered. But this has also come into play where people talk of equipment in the front and at the back. But generally when we are talking of such combination tillage, we are talking now that it will be all attached behind the tractor. So, this could be of two types mainly. passive or active. Now, these are, this, these are the two main types of uh, the implements, combination tillage implements that we are talking of. Passive active elements, sorry, active elements in the combined machine have rotary sets and passive elements have non-rotary parts. So, very clearly said that well, when you talk of a combination tillage, and if you have both the uh, elements or both the implements which are passive that is non rotary type that will be called passive passive. If you have an uh, one which is rotary having and the other one is not rotary then we will call active passive type of implement. What are the advantages of this? Well, this, there, there are large advantages. In fact, if you go uh, to look into the advantages of this, you will find that many things are taken care of and we are economizing on several aspects. First of all is the soil. If you have an implement which is cut, first cutting the soil and the next implement going behind that is pulverizing the soil or even planking the soil. So, you will find that the mean weight diameter or the proper tilth of the soil which is required for seed bed preparation will be, uh, will be completed in one go. So, in one go or one pass of the this particular combination uh, implement, you will be in a position to uh, get this desired soil tilth. So, you will be saving time as in case earlier I said that you will have after the first plowing operation maybe twice operation of the um, harrow and then application of the plank. So, in that case here itself in one pass you will get this tilt made and once you have done this thing you have saved time, you have saved energy, you have saved fuel, machine time and uh, over and over what you have done a proper soil bed. In fact, it has also been found that the bulk density of the soil changes. It has been found that the bulk density of change say about 1.4 gram per cc to it goes to 1.1 or 1.15 gram per cc. This is the uh, bulk density which changes and the mean weight diameter of the soil will also change. So, a proper tilth is, ob uh, is obtained if in one pass you have very effective uh, combination tillage implement. So, this is the important one. Now, so in that line what we are doing here? reduce the number of field operations straight away as I said you reduce the number of uh, passes you do not have to uh, go for several pluses. Then time timeless operation well this is uh, not timeless it will be actually timeliness operation. Timeliness of operation actually that means operation will be completed in time or within the time and definitely saving of time, saving of time, saving of all the other inputs. Lower draft now, this is one thing which we will see in the later course of this lecture that lower draft and specific work requirements, it will definitely uh, take a lower draft. It, the general assumption shows that see when, when the first plowing has been done, 
the soil is ready and the next equipment definitely requires a very less amount of uh, draft to cover that. And since the first soil has been opened with the, with the higher force, this will require lower force and in over, um, overall you will find that um, an average force will be much lesser than what it would have been in the two cases earlier. So, reduce specific fuel consumption, yes this has I have been talking of this that reduce fuel consumption, sure it will reduce because when we have one implement opening the soil and then twice um, uh, um, operation of the um, harrow and then planking you can imagine that what which will be the fuel consumption of the uh, tractor because a tractor if a 40 horsepower tractor or so maybe a 4 to 6 liter or uh, 7 liters per hectare uh, per hour it takes and that much uh, if it has um, uh, operated for about 7 hours 8 hours then you can imagine how much will be the total uh, fuel consumption at that time. Whereas, in one pass you can imagine the same area will be covered and much less uh, fuel consumption, much less machine time. So, you can also increase the uh, life of the equipment, life of the tractor and so on and better soil pulverization. Yes, as I said earlier, the soil tilt, uh, better soil tilt will be obtained because the soil is, uh, is pulverized properly when it goes. Here, there are certain things need to be considered as to how, what will what will be the combination of this uh, implement, whether we want active active or we want active passive or we want passive active, which type of combination will give us the best uh, uh, result or best performance so far as the soil tilt is concerned, so far as the economizing on the uh, other inputs of uh, the uh, field preparation is concerned. We need to look into this. Here we have, I have shown you an example of mold bowl plow and a disc harrow here. A four disc harrow um, is here and mold bowl plow um, is here a two bottom mold bowl plow behind which there is a disc harrow. This is one type of implement which is being used. The other is shown here is a rigid tine here it is a rotavator. It is totally a rotavator here uh, in front and then here the rigid tines. Now, these the this is when operated the rigid tines this is a 5 ton uh, virtually a 5 ton cultivator. So, 5 ton cultivator rigid tines they are um, uh, coming in the front and then rotavator is pulverizing the soil at the back when the implement is attached to the 3 bar um, uh, linkage and taking power from the PTO. So, this is another uh, equipment which we have at IIT Kharagpur and then um, we can use this. Now, what I wanted to just show you that these are the combination. Now, when we are thinking of this combination, we have to think what should be the size, what should be the power source, what should be the arrangement of these which needs to be thought of as an engineer. As an engineer, you would definitely like what should I do so that I get with minimum input maximum output of field preparation, a good soil tilt which will help me in getting better utilization or better germination of the seed. So, let us go to the next slide where we will consider certain other aspects. Well, I have tried to explain to you that a combination tillage implement is a combination of two types of implements together. Now, let us see them slightly uh, objectively and analyze them objectively. For example, we, we know that there is a cultivator which we use behind the tractor and a uh, 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 rotavator which we use behind the tractor. Now, if we take them separately and have a look at the total power required, we will get some idea as to what should be the size of the total implement or the size of the new combination tillage implement which should be there because that should be within the capacity of the tractor which we have. Generally, as I said that we are now uh, earlier uh, maybe about 10, 15 years back, we were talking of category 1 where about 35 horsepower tractors were mostly used for all the operations. But now, we are talking of tractors we are 55, 60 horsepower that means within the category 2. So, let us look at this here. We are considering that this rotavator is operating at a speed of 3 kilometer per hour. The width of the rotavator is 1.63 meter and we know that rotavator has the blades. It has um, in my previous lecture as I discussed with you that there are blades and those blades are cutting. 
the different types of blades, their number of blades, sizes, discs, etc. I have discussed all there. So, I assume that you have an idea from there and we can straight away talk about that rotavator here itself. So, power available at the shaft of the rotavator, what is the power available at the shaft of the rotavator? We got from there that the power available at the shaft of the rotavator, if you are thinking directly say from the engine. from the engine it comes to transmission and then it comes to the uh, drawbar and let us say that um, we are talking of PTO in case of um, rotavator. So, at PTO we have about 90 percent of the um, power 0.9 percent of the total power that we have here we are taking here. So, if we assume even 80 percent of that, so we are in a position to get with taking care of all the losses at the, the various locations, we get that about 26.1 that means about 20.8 HP or 15.6 kilowatt is the power available at the shaft of the rotavator. This is the power available at the shaft of the rotavator. When we cons that means we had a about a 30 hertz per tractor, 30 hertz per 35 hertz per tractor and we are getting about 22.88 or 15.6 kilowatt utilized for operation of the rotavator here. Now, if we see the condition of operation of a cultivator, this is a cultivator here. Cultivator. So, a 910 cultivator has been put here. We are operating at the same um, uh, speed of operation at the same time we are having same width of operation. So, you see here 3 kilometer per hour and we are getting the same width of operation. Now, with this how do we find out what is the total force required, what is the total power required? We know the draft equation which I had given you the ASAE depth equation which I gave you in the earlier class. If we take that and if you recall that we can directly use this and find that the total draft is about 1005 Newton. This is the um, draft which is required over here. So, the power will be then with the speed we can get that this is about 2.24 hertz power or 1.675 kilowatt. This is generally this is operated at um, about about 10 centimeters or so the um, uh, cultivator. So, we find that if we use this we are under utilizing we are use the cultivator we are very much under utilizing the, utilizing the power of the tractor. If you are using this to a greater extent about 80 percent of the power we are utilizing because we are taking it from the PTO. So, we see here that the tractor is operated with the same width of operation which it is operated for certain period of time for a given area and it, it utilizes so much of fuel consumption. Within this, this also utilizes a certain amount of power. Now, you see that if we add these two a total power of if P 1 and P 2 if we call this as P 2 and call this as P 1 then therefore, the total power is this. Supposing we would like that the same size of the implement uh, is attached either behind the prototiller or in front of the if the cultivator is either behind or right cultivator what will happen? We need to think into this. Now, that means, if we see that the total is 23.1 hertz power where which will then say that the total power source a 35 hertz power power source will not do this job. Moreover, we are just assuming we, this is a very simple and you can say a novice addition of power because we have not been in a position to exactly um, uh, put them together of the same implement and find out. We can just we say that okay, let us add this and see what happens. Now, with this then we will be in a position to tell you that the power required is not only 35 horsepower, we will require a higher horsepower power of the tractor. So, this says then that the implement which you are talking of whether a cultivator or rotavator, you have to think of what should be the size of that, what should be the size of the blades, what should be the size of the total equipment, at what uh, speed they should be operated and so on and so forth. They need to be thought of. And hence, it uh, um, explains to us that there is a requirement for thinking about the 
पैसिव पार्ट और अनदर पैसिव पार्ट और एक्टिव पार्ट एंड द नेक्स्ट पैसिव पार्ट और पैसिव एंड एक्टिव ऑल दिस पार्ट्स वी नीड टू लुक इन टू द ड्राफ्ट रिक्वायरमेंट द पावर रिक्वायरमेंट एंड द टोटल वर्क डन बिकॉज अल्टीमेटली वॉट वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इज वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इन हाउ मच इज द पावर आउटपुट दैट वी गेट एंड दैट पावर आउटपुट इज दिस अमाउंट ऑफ स्पेसिफिक वर्क डन बाय द इक्विपमेंट द कम्बिनेशन टीलेज इक्विपमेंट सो लेट एस गो एंड नाउ लुक इन टू दीज टाइप ऑफ इक्विपमेंट विच आर विच आर गोइंग टू बी कॉल्ड एज कम्बिनेशन टीलेज एंड वॉट शुड बी द कॉम्बिनेशन whether active passive passive uh, passive or passive active which way what are what people have done earlier we will have a look at that and we will think of a particular design types of combination tillage implements the active sets operate independently of passive sets now there are two types of arrangements which have been shown in this particular drawing here one is where active sets operate independently of passive sets in in this type of combination in the in the other type of combination the rotary subsoiler pulverizes the bottom of the furrow plowed out of the bottom of the mold board plow now in this combination here we want to show that this is the mold board plow here this is the rotary which is here is connected by power source from here taking power from the pto and this is connected over here this is the rear one so we have a combination here where the plow is slightly above you can see that ak is the total depth of combination tillage so ak is the total depth here ab is the depth of this plow here ac is the depth of this difference in the depth of operation of the active and passive implement this is the one which is rotating so this becomes an active implement and its depth is ac which is lower than ab ab is uh, from this to this ac is this so ultimately we can say that this rotary one is working below uh, the depth of the uh, mold board plow here and same thing is uh, the previous one now we if you see the plan view of this this is this is a side view here if you see the plan view here we can see that there the, this is the width this is the width of the uh, mold board plow and this is the width of the uh, rotor which is here and this portion shows here that there is a power transfer because the the power this is the rotation in this direction here and the rotation here uh, it, it will be in this direction so when we operate this this is at 90 degree so for that this is a 90 degree power transmission which has been shown over here in these so these side view and top views very clearly so that when you have a combination tillage over here we find that the rotary subsoiler pulverizes the bottom of the furrow plowed by the bottom of the mold board plow so whatever is done by this mold board plow it is pulverizing the soil so it is going slightly below uh, the depth and then pulverizing the whatever soil the front uh, mold board plow has plowed it it is pulverizing this this is one type now let's have a look at the other type another type combination here we see that in this combination the active set operates in the entire or in part of the soil layer now you see here this is a1 depth operation of the passive implement this ac depth operation of the active implement this is the active implement as we have seen in the earlier case this is also taking power from here and uh, um, operating this in a similar manner this is the rear one now you see that a combination could be that this tine is in the front and the rotor is at the back you could have a combination where rotor is at in the front and uh, the tine is at the back so what do we get the the passive sets or in the part soil layer pulverizes pulverized by active sets so what it says that the active sets operate in the entire or part of the soil layer 
So, this active uh, operates in the part or, part or total of the soil which has been pulverized by the front one that is with this one. So, this is this does whatever it has done that means, even slightly away it, it is slightly on the other side and hence the total area that it will be pulverizing is this. In key and this in this case the sets operate in uh, de dependent action with passive sets. In this case the sets operate dependent action that means, there is dependency on these. Now, the rotary cutter with cultivator tines creates higher resistance when the shank of the teeth are set before the drum. Now, when these are set before the drum this is what it says that the rotary cultivator with cultivator tines creates higher resistance when when they are when the higher resistance when the shanks of the teeth are set before the drum. If this is the drum and they are set here they are facing more resistance when they are put behind this definitely they will be looking less resistance. So, we say here that if you have the combination tillage depending upon what you want to do you will be in a position to get the implement and then get what is the size of the implement. Let us go ahead. Well, what is the draft requirement? Well, if we have a passive passive implement and a or a um, uh, active passive implement it is very simple we have to add these for example, R C and R C F and R C R. It tells that the specific draft of the combination tillage implement will be a combination of the passive set in the combination tillage and the rear passive set in the combination tillage. That means, this is a passive passive con condition here. So, in a passive passive condition we must know what is the specific draft by the first one what is the draft by the rear one and it, it may also be expressed as suppose we have an independent operation of these two then what may have that this R C can be given as R F plus lambda times R R where R R is the specific draft of the rear passive set uh, operated individually. So, in if it has uh, been operated individually then if then also we can get the specific draft of the combination by this formula here and then this lambda is given by because R C is known to us and R F is also known. So, R C minus R F upon R R R R here will give you a draft utilization ratio this this tells us that what is the level of draft which is which could be utilized if we have a combination like passive passive in this case. Draft of passive active implement is then very clear we have R C R P plus R Y where R Y is the horizontal component of the peripheral force acting on the active implement definitely because then the torque will come because the it is acting on the see if uh, this is the one where it works. So, it is like this and the center. So, this will talk of the torque this is the force here and this is the R value. So, that is why it says that the horizontal component of the peripheral force acting at the implement it talks of this force here. So, if you add these two we will get the um, passive active tillage implements draft. Well, the most important and the next thing is how much is the total work done? We must know what is the amount of work done. So, work done where passive active combination we see that this equation is given here a k delta uh, lambda b lambda uh, a b then lambda c a c. A b is the specific work uh, passive set operating at individual implement a c is specific work an active set operating as an individual implement lambda b and lambda c are the coefficients determining the part of a specific work for passive and active sets respectively. This talks of this lambda b and lambda c talk of what portion of these uh, portion of the uh, implements or portion of the work is added when we have a combination tillage of passive or active. So, now question is what is the value of this lambda? Well, there has been various uh, uh, researches, but still um, people are not uh, very clear about this total value of lambda 
but then uh, in one literature we have got the value of lambda to be uh, lambda b is equal to 0 0.5 lambda c as 0.33 and maybe when you have a uh, active passive if this is this condition if you have uh, passive active maybe you can um, convert those values or interchange the values and can use it this could be one way of looking at the whole thing then the, um, it also expresses the a k is a p plus a t here a p is the specific work combination of um, uh, implement resulting from pulling force here and a t is the specific work combination of combination tillage resulting from torque of the implement sure torque of the implement because that is the uh, one which is uh, helping us in getting the amount of work. So, these two uh, represent the specific work of combination implement resulting from pulling force this then the torque this. Now, if we um, want to detail this or we want to go further um, uh, uh, analysis of this we find that what is this work it is a specific work. So, a specific work talks of we know what RC is RC is the draft of the combination tillage implement. So, if you know this is the draft draft per unit area is the uh, specific work that we are talking of here. So, R c by a into b will be this and this is the one which we are talking of because T by C L will talk of the torque portion that is A T and hence the area A B. So, we will be in a position to find out what is the total area uh, of the um, uh, soil which has been worked by this implement. So, total we can find out. Once we know these that means, we have an idea about how much is R c, how much is T c then we can find out the total power P c which is given as R c into B plus T c into omega because T c is the torque which is coming uh, on the combination tillage implement. So, this is the torque, torque into omega will give us the power in fact, um, twice pi omega T and for a unit uh, um, rotation then we should be in a position to get the power of this particular combination. Thank you.